Welcome to this tutorial of Imagine, the song written by John Lennon and the arrangement as performed by Tommy Emanuel. This isn't a note-for-note -note transcription and still I have managed to rack up this video to a length of more than 50 minutes. This isn't meant for uh, viewing in one single go, so watch one section, get it into your fingers and come back a few weeks or a few days later. How doesn't matter how fast you can learn it and get the next section into your fingers. I will be adding timestamps down below in the description. I also had to change the arrangement just a little bit because Tommy Emanuel plays this different every single time he plays it. So I had to shoehorn it into something that's a bit more fit for educational use. So the first verse will be focusing on single note playing. The second verse will be focusing on a more chordal approach of the melody and the third verse will be something different altogether. Now, get your guitar, drop down the low D string to a drop D tuning and get to playing. Have fun with this one and see you next time. Let's take a look at the intro first. Here we go. So that doesn't seem too difficult. Now there's one sneaky little technique buried in between there. You're starting out on the open D chord, open string, D string, open A string, open D string. 2nd fret on the G string, 3rd fret on the B string and we are playing the low D string only on the first beat 1, 2, 3, 4 and 2 the G, 5th fret with the pinky 1, 2, 3, 4 1, 2, 3, 4 1, 2, 3, 4 Now you may, not, may have noticed that when I played the intro the first time, there was one extra bass note and we're playing that by means of a left hand hammer-on or a left hand tap. So in between the last chord and the last bass note you play in each bar with the thumb, there is a hammer-on with the left hand. So that's the order in which uh, this little lick is played. So playing index finger, middle finger. It sounds like this, really slow first. And it's the same on the D and G chord. It's a bit harder on the G chord when you're coming from the D chord. You're playing an open low D string, so the hammer-on isn't that difficult. But if you come from the G chord, you first have to lift the pinky and then hammer down with uh, the ring finger in very quick succession to each other. So that's, that's a bit more tricky. After that hammering on. So the first time it's technically seen it's a hammer on from the open string to the fourth fret. The second time it's more of a left hand tap so you're lifting the finger that means the string is no no longer ringing or out or vibrating and once you lift the pinky you have to hammer on strongly with the ring finger so you can practice this separately if you want to make sure uh, the low D string is muted and just by hammering on you should get a firm and, and full sounding bass note. And then it's on. 
down to the verse. Now, if you take a look at the verse, I'm not going to go over each uh, and every single fingering separately because you can look at this from a more general uh, perspective. Most of the fingerings follow this uh, line of thought. Uh, you will play quite a lot of fourth frets on the D string with uh, the ring finger, second fret on the G and B string with the index finger, and sometimes you will play a little fill going to the third fret with the middle finger. Let me play the verse for you one time, uh, a bit slower than on uh, Tommy Emanuel's versions, and then I'll come back and have a look at the different, more tricky sections uh, that might need some extra explanation. Here we go. As you can see, most of the melody lines are played in single notes um, and the fingering I explained earlier does pop up quite a lot. Fourth fret with ring finger, first fret on the second fret and first finger on the second fret on the B string as well, sometimes adding a little fill with the middle finger. Now there are a few sections that might require some extra explanation, so I'm going to go over it one more time, a bit slower, and explain a few different bars with a bit of trickier passages. Here we go, a bit slower. difference uh, in terms of if you uh, compare it to the first bar we are adding the fourth uh, fret as a bass note once again like in the intro this time it's not a left hand tap we're just playing the bass note with the thumb to a harmonic on the 12th fret now this harmonic is not difficult, it's nothing special either, but you have to make sure that if you play this harmonic on the 12th fret that it keeps ringing out over the next chord as well. So the very last note of the bar of the G chord, you're playing this 12th fret, then you're moving to the D chord again, but if you mute that chord, still there, can you hear it? So that's uh, quite a significant detail, so make sure you don't accidentally mute that natural harmonic, if you transfer to the open position again, make sure this one rings out as long as possible. The same G major arpeggio as in the second bar. We're adding a few uh, embellishments quick hammer-ons uh, to, to spice up the melody just a little bit. Uh, you could also play this just with a regular fretted note. But just to add some variation to the song, you can add hammer-ons pull-off slides as you see fit. Uh, I play this one two times. Maybe you choose to play it one time. Or maybe you choose to play it only the second time. So all those variations are up for you to choose. So you can pick whatever you think sounds best and go with it that way. Okay, so. So one little fill. up to the second, pulling up to an open string. And there is the first, a 
a bit more tricky run of the song. So you're playing the same G major arpeggio you played a few times before already, but there is one difference. Uh, in the previous times we would always transfer to the bass note with the pinky. With the pinky for the fifth fret on the low D string. Now we're changing that, we are going to play this bass note with the index finger. So let me add the bar in front, the D chord. Moving with the index finger to the fifth fret. And this way we are better prepared to make a quick shift to the seventh fret and then to the twelfth fret. So that's the only reason why we are changing from the pinky to the index finger for the bass note. Because this little harmonic run is coming up. All natural harmonics, no special techniques needed, so very lightly touch straight above the 7th fret on the B string and the G string. Then move over to the 12th fret on the D string. And now we're staying on the 12th fret all the time. D string, G string, A string, D string. note on the fifth fret once more. So take this one slow, it, it, it moves by quite quickly. Make sure those harmonics as well keep ringing out, not muting, not muting every single one of them, but make sure they ring out as long as possible. And especially make sure they keep ringing out as you play this next bass note. Then on to the next bar. Nothing really special there. Maybe one thing to look out for is you're playing the melody note the first time with the index finger. And the second time you're moving to the middle finger because you can prepare that way for the D over F sharp chord. harmonics on the 12th fret and again ending up on an open G string so high E string B string G string D string A string open G string if you watched some of the other Tommy Emanuel tutorials you might know one thing I'm always on the lookout for people with a bit smaller hands and in this case Tommy goes off again playing bass notes with the thumb over the side of the neck now this one is actually quite easy to replace, so if you find this difficult playing the high uh, F sharp on the E string with the index finger and playing the bass note over the side of the neck with the thumb, this one is actually replaced quite easily. So instead of playing this with the thumb over the side of the neck, you can play this. You have to uh, switch out the fingering with the index finger with the middle finger for the top note. In that way you can leave the thumb behind the side of the neck and play the bass note with the index finger. And for the rest you're not changing anything. So exactly the same notes, no uh, passages are cut short. Uh, no things are left out, you're just swapping out uh, two fingers, so instead of playing this, you're moving that way, and that way you can leave the thumb behind the side of the neck. We're ready to close out the first verse, so you play the harmonic run. Hammering on from the open string to the second fret. C sharp in the bass, G chord with a D 
D in the bass and then sliding up the third to the fifth fret and playing the open A string. And that is uh, the first verse. Now, if you want, really want to go all out Tommy Emmanuel, he plays a blues fill uh, that's more at home in, in a lot of electric guitar players' uh, vocabulary um, to transfer to the second verse. If this is not your thing, you can just uh, rest for four beats on this chord and then continue to the second verse. If you want to play it, it's third fret. On the, G, on the B string, sorry, hammering onto the fifth fret, bending up a full step and then adding in the fifth fret on the high E string. So it's, it's a bit of a country-esque lick. A lot of country players use this, a lot of blues and rock players use this, but bending that B string up a whole step on acoustic guitar strings well, it's not the easiest thing for the left hand. So one more time with uh, two bars in front of that. So that is all for the very first first. I'm gonna play through it one more time, a bit slower, so you can follow along with the tablature, and then we're heading into the second verse. on to the second verse. Now, as already stated in the intro, the second verse isn't that different from the first verse. The only thing we are going to add is we're no longer playing the melody only in single notes, we are going to try and add chords every now and then. So, most of the fingering, fourth fret with ring finger, first fret with the index finger, most of that actually stays the same, but once in a while you will be playing a bar I'm uh, sorry, we're gonna start out with just an open D chord that will appear once in a while, the same shape we used in the intro. Then you will have to use a bar at the second fret with, with a D, D string, open D string in the bass. And this gives you a D major, seventh D major, ninth sound uh, if you combine these notes. So an A shape with a low D bass note actually sounds like a D major ninth chord. Once in a while you will have to play a fill using a hammer-on and pull-off to uh, the third fret. We use that one in the first verse as well, but now we will have to play it using a bar on the first fret going to the same open B string. So that's basically all you need to know uh, for the fingering in the second verse. Let me play it one time. Uh, close to a concert speed and then you will notice that there are actually quite a lot of things reappearing that you already saw in the first verse. second verse. As you can see, a lot of stuff is coming back from the first verse. Let me play it one through one time a bit slower and then again 
uh, add some attention to the parts that need it. Here we go. That little fill in the beginning of the first bar will reappear a few times. So pulling off from the second fret G string to the open string, fourth fret with the ring finger, again to the open G string and adding the second fret again. One of those chord shapes, bar at the second fret with the G in the bass. Quite a large uh, chord shape, but it's still what we call in position, so one fret for each finger, little bar at the second fret and a bass note at the fifth fret. is one of the few uh, new additions in the second verse and it's the classic chromatic uh, piano fill you hear in the original so it's all open strings D string G string and B string hammering on with the index finger on the first fret hammering on with the middle finger to the second fret and then sliding up to the third fret and make sure the lower two strings the D string and the G string keep ringing out and the first time we end the melody on the A note. Make sure these, this lick is very, very even. So every hammer on and the slide all produce exact 16 notes. So no rushing. Uh, no speeding up on any, any uh, specific technique, make sure they are nice and even. Second time. Same lick, but this time we are ending on the high E string. Okay, so let me play the, those four bars uh, in succession to each other. Same harmonic trick, and in the first bar, there's not really that much extra to mention. So, um, on to the next two bars. Exactly the same harmonic lick, and the next few bars are exactly the same as in the first verse as well. exactly the same as the first verse. Now to transfer to the chorus, there is a different, different lick. This is one of my favorite Tommy Emmanuel licks in the song. Uh, it's a bit of a chordal uh, move to the G chord for the uh, chorus. So what you're doing is a little bar at the fifth fret from an A chord shape, so sixth fret, fifth fret, fifth fret, hammering on the 7th fret with the uh, ring finger and pinky, sliding down to the 3rd fret, then moving over to a D shape with an F sharp down below, pulling off to an A chord and ending up on the G chord. That was the whole 2nd verse, so let me play it one more time, really slowly so you can follow along and then it's into the chorus.
the chorus. Now the chorus is basically the same three bars that are always repeated. There is only one especially difficult fingering uh, in there, so I'm going to play it one time. You will see, probably already notice the fingering when I'm uh, playing it, and then I'll come back and give you the explanation, as always. As you saw, G chord, to an A chord, to a D chord. Up until that point there is probably nothing too difficult for most of you. But then we are moving to a D chord with a raised fifth, so the A becomes an A sharp, and the F sharp in the bass. The very first time, this isn't too difficult, let's go over it. string. Index finger, middle finger, both on the third fret. This isn't too difficult, but then in the next bar Tommy adds a few uh, embellishments and that does make the fingering a bit more uh, tricky. So, first time. nearly impossible to play this in a fluid manner and it is necessary to uh, prepare for this fingering from the very start of the bar even in the last notes of the few uh, of the bar before that so this is what you get in the bar before that and this is the first important one hammering on from the second fret to the fourth fret with the pinky not with the ring finger, as you would expect, but with the pinky. And this gives you the right position to uh, transfer to that more tricky chord uh, without muting or, or leaving out any strings. adding the rest of the chord yet, index finger on the third fret, pinky on the fourth fret with uh, the middle finger and ring finger still actually doing nothing, adding the ring finger on the low D string for the bass note and then adding the middle finger on the third fret of the B, of the B string to get the full sounding chord. If you mess up in the beginning of the bar and not use the pinky but the ring finger for that hammer on, you are putting yourself in an impossible position to get this chord into your fingers uh, in a fluid uh, manner that doesn't mess up the flow of the song. So make sure you hammer on with the pinky. soon as we have to play that fourth fret right away with the pinky. So in that last bar is a D chord to D with an F sharp in the bass to G at the ninth to A sus4 extending the bar to the D, uh, D string as well and then we're straight into the third verse. 
Let me play the chorus one more time really slowly so you can follow along and then we're straight into the next part. Now the third verse is something completely different. The first few bars you will recognize the song and then after a few bars Tommy Emmanuel goes off and plays something completely different. I'm going to take you uh, through uh, the version I transcribed note for note uh, but do remember that if you watch different versions he always plays something else in this part. It's mainly centered around the D chord but we'll get to that in a second. First the start of the third verse. section probably looks familiar it's exactly the same as the first and second first but that part in between is something really really different so let's start out very first bar little bar on the seventh fret which is again a D chord up until now we always play the D chords in open position now we're playing the D chord with uh, in, in the bar form root on the fifth fret but we're only playing this little part of the chord a little unaccompanied bend, no bass notes, nothing going on in between. Bending up from the 12th fret, the B note, to the C sharp should sound like the 14th fret. And re releasing the bend to the 12th fret. If you're not used to bending, you can also play it just as a fretted note or with a hammer on, as you like. Or, or a hammer on, it should work as well. And then a little sequence in triads, A triad on the ninth fret moving to a G triad, seventh fret, to another inversion of an A triad on the fifth fret, to the same fingering on the third fret, and again moving or ending up on that little D chord on the seventh fret. The rhythm is a triplet and then two eight notes. One, two, three, four, one. That's rhythm. Three, four, one. And adding the bass note on the first beat. So. chord, hammering on, second fret, uh, sorry, uh, eighth fret, second fret, no, eighth fret on the B string, ninth fret on the D string, and sliding that fingering up two frets, and then again to the A triad, pulling off from the tenth fret, forming a sus chord for, uh, form to the same A triad we played before. And 
then we're into the really difficult section or the section that is a bit more delicate to play. So let me play this uh, one time really slowly. That whole arpeggio section uh, is moving a lot around uh, the neck from the 17th fret all the way to open position and back again. So take a really good look at those fingerings. In terms of technique, there's not really much going on except for the very first uh, two chord voicings. This one might work for most people as you really high up the neck. 10th fret with the index finger, 14th fret with the pinky and the ring finger. So that might work for most people. But then you have to move that down to the third fret, seventh fret and seventh fret. And this is a wide, wide stretch. Now people who watch the other tutorials might recognize this chord shape because this is uh, the chord shape around which Halfway Home is built. So people who can play that song will actually feel quite at home here. Uh, but for people with, again, smaller hands, this isn't an easy chord uh, to get your fingers around. Make sure your posture is right, thumb down below on the neck. Arc the, the, the wrist down and make sure it's not stuck up here because this will make it impossible. And then to the rest. Now there are, again, alternatives. So if this doesn't work, or especially if this doesn't work, you can also play it like this. Same chord, it's exactly the same notes, but you miss that overlapping sound of those three notes overlapping all the time. You could also play the same lick we used before, pulling off from the tenth finger, from the tenth fret, sorry, from the tenth fret to the ninth fret, and then playing tenth fret again on that same uh, A triad shape and then doing the same in second position on the D shape. Same thing. So as you can hear exactly the same pitch, exactly the same notes, but the overlapping uh, effect is lost if you go for the pull-off effect. the lick is basically a very large D arpeggio with uh, the ninth degree thrown in there um, and a few hammer-on and pull-off fills. Let me play that bar really slowly. So we're sticking in the same fingering here. To an open E string, moving to the seventh fret. sure everything keeps ringing out. And then to a very long, almost two bar long single note lick. Ending back up on fifth position or third position with the index finger. So harmonic on the 12th fret of the E string. String, moving up from the 12th fret, so the third note is actually a fretted note, harmonic, harmonic, fretted note, sliding up two frets, middle finger on the 16th fret, index finger 14, middle finger uh, 15, and then the ring finger on the 17th fret. Now if you look at your uh, position, it should be more uh, logical to use the pinky on the 17th fret. And if you're playing this arrangement on an electric guitar, I suggest you do that. But if you are playing like me without a cutaway down below, it is actually a lot easier to use your ring finger to get up to the 17th fret. As Tommy does, 
pull it back in terms of timing and rhythm. Take your time for this one. And then it's hammer-ons and pull up, a hammer-on lick all the way down. So once again, the whole lick really slowly. little arpeggiating part in between always the same fingering So the end of the third verse, despite all the changes in the rest of the third verse, the end is exactly the same as the first two verses. So nothing too difficult there. Hopefully uh, at this point, you're able to get your fingers around most of the chord shapes. So then it's into another chorus, which is exactly the same as the previous chorus. in the bass. Really rest on this one the very final time. So one little fill at the end. Hammering on index finger second fret to the third fret, pulling back off to an open string, third fret on the B string, open G string, hammering on to the second fret, and a low D note to round it off. We played that part already uh, when we played the first chorus. And now there is an option for you. You can end the arrangement here. This could be the full arrangement. So this is where you could end and you have played. Imagine all the way through with the intricate licks and, and, and Tommy Emmanuel fills all around. But there is a special Tommy Emmanuel ending too with a lot of natural, uh, sorry, artificial harmonics. Not natural harmonics, but artificial harmonics. That one is a challenge in its own, but I will make sure to include it here and, and show you how to play it. So, one more time, the ending, and then we're heading over into the harmonic section. Tommy Emmanuel outro lick using artificial harmonics. 
If you play this using a thumb pick, you will notice that it's a lot easier to get a clear sounding harmonic if you use a thumb pick while playing at this style. Uh, I like playing the rest of the song without the thumb pick, so I have to make do with what I have to play that closing section. If you have never played this kind of style, this is actually one of the more doable, uh, playable pieces uh, to get started in this technique. So what is happening? You're always playing chord shape down here and you are mirroring 12 frets higher with the index finger very lightly touching above the string and playing the string with the thumb. So what happens is I'm playing the 7th fret right here so I'm counting up 12 frets so that ends up on the 19th fret I'm very lightly touching straight above the fret and I'm playing the note with the thumb. Same thing happens on the next string. So now I'm on the ninth fret, so I have to go to the 21st fret. Now I only have 20 frets, so I have to count, sort of count out, and I know that on this guitar it's right on the edge of, of the fingerboard. That's where the other harmonic is. So that's the first step in getting this technique going, is playing the harmonics separately. Then we're laying down the rest of the chord. So we're playing 7th fret, 9th fret, 7th fret, 9th fret. And now I will be alternating between the harmonics. Harmonic, 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 harmonic. And now I will, will start alternating the B and the E string in between those harmonics. with the thumb, ring finger, thumb, ring finger. And that technique is followed through throughout the rest of the chords. Now, it's not really necessary going over this with each and every fingering. I'll make sure to notate in the tab where you have to finger uh, the, the exact notes. And it's always mirroring 12 frets higher. Take this one really slow in the beginning. live version Tommy plays a few different fills. I'm leaving those out now just to give you a, a nice place to start with this natural harmonic technique. First chord, open D string. Leaving out the 9th fret to the 7th fret. So I have to move down to the 19th fret up here. Natural harmonic on the 19th fret. Leaving out the pinky, but that doesn't change anything where you have to play those harmonics because we're not playing harmonics on the high E string. Again, natural harmonic on the 19th fret. playing an open A string, soft touch, no, don't make it too loud. D chord, and maybe a natural harmonic on the seventh fret as well. So that's the whole harmonic run.
So that's the whole arrangement of Imagine by Tommy Emmanuel. Take your time with this one, have fun, and see you next time. Bye-bye.